Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric on our continuing series in the Atomist Wave to Dreamcast ports. And at this point in time when I'm recording it, we have almost the entire library over to Dreamcast, minus some light gun games. And today we're taking a look at Guilty Gear Isuka, which is kind of a spin-off from the Guilty Gear X series. Before we get too far involved, you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we have a Patreon link down there as well that's always helpful. But Guilty Gear Isuka is a really awesome game, and I've always loved the Guilty Gear franchise, and depending on how I schedule these, you've probably already seen Guilty Gear X 1.5. But Isuka does things a little bit differently in that it isn't a mainline entry in the series. It's a spin-off, so there really isn't any story whatsoever. And while maintaining most of the same mechanics, it does make some changes. Some that I feel like may not be for the better, but that's kind of up to you guys to decide. But the nice thing is we get a lot more characters than Guilty Gear X 1.5, and that's always a bonus. And of course, as usual, I'm going to go with Faust because he is my normal playable character. So the interesting thing about this game is that there's two fundamental changes to the core mechanics. One that I really appreciate and one that I don't love as much. The first being, as you'll see there, we're at level one right now. We have a life bar and underneath that there's that red what looks like an eye. And that's actually a soul. So if we lose all the energy in our bar it is going to refill itself until the point that we don't have any souls left and then we are going to lose the match. So you can actually lose your entire life bar and continue and it makes it interesting. You'll see here when I'm fighting Potemkin, I have to get that first soul out of him and have his life bar refill before I can actually win the match. It's just a different type of mechanic. It makes the matches feel a little bit longer and I actually really do enjoy that. And I also love that he's in front of a pirate ship. If you know Battleship Potemkin, I went to film school. If you don't, ignore me completely. Now the component of this game I don't love, it's kind of twofold. One. The backgrounds aren't that exciting and they're not very animated and I'm playing on the same background two matches in a row and in fighting games I really like seeing the mechanics change up and that's why I showed you losing so quickly because a lot of the times in the matches you carry your old life bar into the next one. Unfortunately it also freezes on an optical disc emulator or emulation when you lose a match. So this release isn't perfect yet, so if you do lose, you have to just start over from the beginning. A little bit of a bummer, it's fine, these things happen when you're porting games over, but just keep that in mind. But the real mechanic that I don't love is that you can push a button and face towards or away from your character, and there is a foreground and a background layer that you can fight in. Now it kind of feels like real about Fatal Fury, except Fatal Fury did that mechanic a lot better and it feels a lot smoother. You can kind of end up playing a little bit too much of a cat and mouse game with the AI and that plane switching. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I kind of like my Guilty Gear when it just exists on one 2D plane, because in this instance you're going into the foreground and the background. And I apologize too, my gameplay isn't great right now. About 10 minutes before I recorded this video, I was cutting a loaf of bread for croutons for Thanksgiving, and I sliced my thumb open, and it's really hard to use the D-pad. If you've ever been watching the channel a lot, you know I'm kind of prone to hurting myself, and in some videos I'm completely bandaged up. It's just I'm clumsy. But it's still so much fun to have Guilty Gear Asuka on the Dreamcast. I mean, this did get ported to the PlayStation 2, it got ported to PC. So this isn't something that's been hard to play before this release compared to Guilty Gear X 1.5 which never came home outside of the Dreamcast port last week. This is something that you can definitely have interacted with before. I own it on the Xbox and playing it on the Dreamcast, it's fun, it's you know interesting and if you don't own an Xbox or PlayStation 2, it's a great way to play it especially for free. But this isn't something that we've never seen before, so in that instance, it's great to have another Dreamcast game, but there's a ton of ways that you could have played this before compared to something like you know, Dolphin Blue, which has never been ported. But I want to let you do is watch a little bit of the gameplay. This is one of the better backgrounds that I enjoy. Soundtrack's great. Sound effects are awesome. I'll be back in about a minute. We'll close up with Guilty Gear Asuka, but enjoy. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
できるあ恥ずかしいな。You lose! I took another loss and I had to restart the game, and that's the unfortunate part about this release, and I'm sure they'll fix it up because some of the Dreamcast releases of Atomic Wave games have had some bugs in them, but you have to beat this game from start to finish without taking a single loss or else you have to restart, and I was not able to do that for this capture. But now that we're on to another stage, I do love these giant red-eyed alien monsters walking in the background, but again, the background's pretty static. You just have those monsters running around with a few frames of animation, and if you jump, there's a couple shooting stars. I would say that this is probably my least favorite Guilty Gear game, which isn't to say I don't like it, it's just to say that the entire franchise is so good that this just doesn't meet that same requirement that I'm looking for in a Guilty Gear game. And maybe I wasn't enjoying it that much today because like I said, slice my finger open, a lot harder to use a d-pad when you're kind of bleeding on it. But short of that, it's still great to have all these games on Dreamcast. What I'm really hoping for in the future is that we get some of the light gun games as well because those are the hardest games to really enjoy at home. You can buy an Atomus Wave, you can set up a super gun, but getting the actual like light guns involved is really difficult. I've got some videos on my channel about how I play arcade light gun games at home, but I will say it's really a big pain in the butt. But with fighting games like Guilty Gear X 1.5 and Guilty Gear Asuka, all you need is a Dreamcast and a controller. All you need is an emulator. It's really easy, and again, as I've said in every single video, big thanks to Megavolt 85 for cracking the code to get the Atomic Wave games running on Dreamcast, because this is the, I think, 11th video I've made about Dreamcast releases from the Atomic Wave in the last two weeks, and who would have ever guessed we would have had that many new Dreamcast games to play in fall of 2020. And even with things, I've done videos on some of the unreleased Atomus Wave games that have recently come out, Force 5 and Kenju. There's just a ton of Atomus Wave stuff going on. I never heard anyone even really mention Atomus Wave that much in the last like five years, and suddenly it is the hot topic of 2020. But again, if you've never played Guilty Gear Asuka, you definitely owe it to yourself to check it out. It is more fun with multiple players. Granted, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and I can't just invite a bunch of people over to play a fighting game. And you can play this with four players as well. But against the CPU, it's a really decent time. If you've got friends, if you live with roommates, they enjoy fighting games, fire this up because you're definitely going to have a good time. Short of that, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll have more videos in the Atomus Wave to Dreamcast port series, as well as videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays as well. I kind of slide these videos in where they fit, so I'm not exactly sure the next day that I want to get up at 7 a.m. and talk about one is, but we will definitely have some soon. Short of that, we'll see you guys next time, but if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, ring that notification bell. Definitely helps me out. And if you have any questions, comments, or need any help running these games, leave them down below. I'm always happy to help people who need a little bit of a hand to get it going. Short of that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.